Hello there, how's it going? Welcome to this PlayStation development tutorial where we will be de building, deconstructing the Hello World example that you saw last week. We'll actually be building it from scratch and then we'll try to implement some new features into it. So that's going to be really nice and hopefully you'll get a good overview over what everything really means because I know it can be overwhelming. So let's get straight to it. To make everything a bit more simple, I've added a file called constants.h, which is basically just a header file that you'll have to include. It will do all the dirty stuff for you and you'll not have to think of that. Of course, you can always look into it if you're interested. I am using Eclipse for this setup and I've made it run that batch, which basically Cymex runs the Cymex command, compiles it uh, and runs epsxe emulator with the main.exe that's being output from it, as you saw in the last episode. So this batch, I've made a shortcut on my desktop here. And I've set up a shortcut here, so you can say Control, Shift, and Q. And then we'll run it by that, so you don't have to mess around in the emulator every time. So let's try to build a program that simply displays hello on the screen. First of all, let's just fix our imports and then set up a main loop in C that's just int main and return zero, return zero. So this is basically the most simple program you can make in C. Of course we need a loop, so while true. There are no booleans in C either, so we are going to write zero and one instead, where zero is false and one is true. Um, so before we uh, get into the loop, we want to initialize. And I'll just do it that way, and then down here I'll make a void called initialize. So in this initialize, we want to do two things. We want to initialize the screen, and there's a method for that. It's called initialize initialize screen, like that. Just making sure that I sh I think I misspelled this. Initialize screen. See if it gets the reference, it gets the reference, all right. And then we want to initialize the debug fund because we want to draw text with the debug fund so that it gets loaded into the RAM. So that's it, that's our initialization. So in the loop, we want to do two things. We want to draw something and we do that by saying F and T print. And then the text in here that we want to display, in this case it was, hello. And then we actually want to draw it. So we say draw. And we of course need to set up our draw method ourselves. So we say void draw. And in here, it's going to be a bit more complicated because when you draw on a PlayStation, you use something called an ordering table. An ordering table is basically um, an, uh, an array containing uh, ordering table tags, as they're called. And the purpose of it is to to uh, order the way we're drawing things, uh, to sort it automatically. So it's basically, if you're familiar with JavaScript, it's basically a canvas. Um, um, so, so you just draw things to the ordering table and then the ordering table sorts it and you'll be able to draw the ordering table with one single line. So that's pretty practical. An ordering table in, in PsyQ is called GSOT. And let's just call it ordering table. And we actually want to initialize it with two here, because if you draw one ordering table on the screen all the time, you'll experience flickering because you'll actually see the drawing. We're going with two ordering tables so that we draw on one that's not visible while the other one is visible. Then when the drawing is finished, we flip them so that the finished drawing uh, ordering table will be displayed. And then we draw on the other one and flip them again. And that way we're going to avoid the flickering. So that's how we do that. Okay, so I hope that wasn't too confusing. Uh, you can always read more about it in the PDF found in the PsyQ. I will also link it in the description. So in the drawing thing here, we want to get the current buffer. And we'll just set up a short current buffer here. So here we say current buffer is equal to gs 
uh, get active buff. So this will get the current buffer, which is either the first, uh, which is either zero or one here, because if we say ordering table zero, it will refer to the first one, and if we say one, it will refer to the second one. So that's what we do with the current buffer here. We try to get a number that we can put into the ordering table to get the current one, so we can do the flipping. I'll show you in a moment. So the first thing we want to do is to flush the font, F and T flush. So that, that makes the font that we use here and initialize here available for the next drawing step. We want to draw it every loop, so we need to clear it up. Then we need to clear the ordering table. We do that by saying clear is clear OT. And here you select the pointer that's zero. Here you select something else. Uh, I'll t tell you about that in a moment. And you reference the ordering table. You just say and ordering table. And then the uh, index, which is the current buffer. So we refer to the correct one. And for some reason, it's not linking because this is a t small t. And there you go. Okay, so we cleared the ordering table. Now we need to sync and wait for the draw to finish. So we don't want to draw anything else before the current drawing is finished. So we say draw sync here, and then we go vsync also with big S here to uh, to synchronize with the frames with the frame rate. So we get a constant frame rate instead of uh, an unlimited frame rate um, to to balance. So so our frame rate is constant. Then we can easily work with uh, everything and make sure that everything moves with the same speed and draws the same times per second every time. Um, I'm sure you'll understand this if you're familiar with game development. So let's move on and this is the time where we actually swap the two buffers that we have, the two ordering tables. To do that by saying gs swap this buff. And then they are swapped and then we just want a nice background color on it while we sort the ordering table and we say gs um, sort clear we want to sort it with a clear color this method takes four arguments the first three being a color which is a red green blue color so it's red green blue and then here you refer to the ordering table which is this thing here Okay, so a color in a red, green, blue, in this case, can, can range from 0 to 255. Five. So if I say, this is the red one, this is the green one, this is the blue one. If I put 255 here, we'll get a completely blue one. Or if I put 255 here and 0 here, we'll get a completely green background. Or if I just don't put anything, we'll get it black. Or if I put 255 in all of them, it will be white. So I want a blue one, I'll put 255 here. And then we actually want to draw the ordering table. We just say gs draw ot and then refer to the ordering table. That's pretty much it. That's how it works. Uh, so now we should be able to run it. Let's try to save this and run it. Oh no, something's wrong here. Let's see, what did we do here? Um, for some reason it says the draw is implicit. Uh, implicitly declared. Let's try to rename it. I don't know if it overrides anything. Let's call it display. Just for that matter. No, still doesn't work. Too few arguments to function draw sync. Ah, yeah, sure. Here we need to put in zero and we also need to put in zero here. Just specifying the mode. As you can see, it needs a mode. And this mode will wait for the current. Uh, drawing and frame to be finished before it continues. So we run it and you see we get a nice blue screen with hello on it. Okay so let's make this do something. Let's make this count the number of times it has been through the loop. So we do that by saying instead of the hello thing here we store the uh, the text in a string or there are no strings in C so that's a char um, and we're going to call it the, the, the char draw text 
or text, full text, let's call it full text, equals hello, and with a semicolon, of course. And instead of hello, we want to say current loop, and something here. Okay, so we of course need something to count the number of loops, say loop counter, equals zero. Whenever we get into a loop, we want to increase the loop counter by one. We do that by doing that. So now we want the string to be... Um, we, we, we also want to say how many numbers we want in here. We want 100 characters inside the string, so it can grow a lot. And then in the while loop here, we say string cat. Um, that will... No, this is wrong. It's not string cat, it's something else. What is it? I forgot, I did it before. Uh, no, not here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? In Pong, I guess. S print F. So we go S print F. And then the text you want to output. You want to output it to full text. I guess this is not a reference or anything. No. And then you say current loop present uh, colon percent D. And then in here we want the uh, loop amount, loop counter. So this sprint F will take the full text variable and store it with the current loop. Uh, replaced percent %d with the loop counter and then we will print the full text and then we should be able to see the amount of, loop, of loops it's getting and you see it's counting so I hope this is not too confusing I'm really trying to break this down as much as I can but really try to take a look into the documentation of the PsyQ and um, and have a look into the constants that age to see what's going on in there I hope that you enjoyed the video. I'm really making an effort to really simplify the concept that is here. Um, so if you enjoy that, please leave a like, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, any doubts, please write them below. I'll try to answer them as simply as possible and I'll get to answer all of your questions. Don't worry about that. So see you next time. Thank you for watching.